Hi, welcome to the third video in the series. In this short video, I'm just going to cover separating the, the crankcase halves. So we had had it down to a, a short block in the last video. We'd taken one of the, the heads off. I've now removed the second head. Same procedure as the first one. The only difference is on the chain box, there's one bolt. The top right hand one there is actually inside the chain box. Other than that, it's the same. So with that done, I'm going to lift the cylinder sleeve off. This just lifts straight up and then we'll be able to see the pistons and I'll be able to take the pistons off. I've moved the engine onto an engine stand to make it much easier to work on. You're probably wondering why I didn't do this beforehand and the answer is because I was waiting for the stand to be delivered um, and also I, I didn't have the yoke available so I've, um, I've managed to borrow a yoke which goes on there. Um, the way the yoke works it just bolts onto one half of the crankcase, you see with those two bolts there which means that it's possible to separate the crankcase whilst it's attached on the engine stand. Um, so the engine is the, the correct way up for removing the, the top half of the crankcase now. But before that can be done, the pistons need to be removed. You can see I've wrapped some, some material around the, just some rags around here, just to protect the pistons against these. The reason that the pistons need to be removed is because there's some webbing you see that there inside the crankcase. So basically, if you try to, if you look at it and think, oh, okay, the uh, the piston will fit through the hole there, no problem, even with the rings on. I'll just undo the crankcase and lift it up. You'll get it up and then find that that webbing hits on the bottom of the piston and, um, and you have to stop. So I've got to remove the pistons. That's done by removing the circlip on them. So you'll see there's a circlip in there. So I need to remove that. So I'm removing the one that's furthest away from the flywheel end and then pulling the, the pin out. So I remove this one, pull it out, spin the engine over so I can get to it, do the same for that one, and then rotate the crankshaft slightly to get at the other ones. And once those are all pulled out, I can then move on to removing the, the, crank, the top crankcase half. Um, when I take the pistons out, although these ones are most likely not going to be used again, I will be keeping them with their respective liners. So I've got the, the liners for one to three and four to six uh, set aside and marked up and I'll be putting the pistons with the correct ones. Even though they won't be used, I want to measure them. So I'll be measuring the pistons and measuring the cylinders just to see how much wear was on them. Here's one of the pistons that's been taken out. There you can see the, the groove that the circlip sits in. A few little marks where it's been taken out. When taking these out, the the clips, um, you know, be careful with them. They they like to to bounce around. I managed to lose two of them, but the uh, the other four I kept. Um, I managed to to get them out using a, a sort of pointed scriber to get in behind them. And there you can see I've just put some elastic bands on the rods just to stop them clanging around whilst uh, getting the engine ready. So, on to splitting the crankcases. To separate the two crankcase halves, first remove all of the nuts around the outside. There's a nut and bolt there, including the one that's hidden down there, and all of those along that side. Then there's a nut in here goes on there which I've taken off that one there and then undo all of the tension bolt nuts which are these here starting from the outside and working in so do um, this one first then so that's number two because we've done taken the nut there so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then once they are removed, the tension bolts themselves push out from the bottom side, apart from these four here, which can't be removed until we get the crankcases apart. And then when they're out, this is what they look like. So I've got the first one out. 
after I told you which bolts to remove there, I realized that I uh, actually missed a couple. There's also a nut on here, which needs to come out. There are three nuts along here, and there are also two bolts on the bottom side. So just uh, sort of underneath here, underneath here. So these, they all need to come out. Um, I didn't realize about the ones on the bottom and uh, I was trying for a little bit of time to try and split the two halves of the case before I uh, realized it wasn't happening. And uh, on investigation found that there were two other bolts on the bottom. So with those done, it comes apart reasonably easily. Here inside the crankcase, you can see the oil pump with the filter on it here, the strainer. So it um, sucks the oil out the bottom of the crankcase to return it to the, to the tank. Here are the bearings. Bearings look to be in pretty decent condition. I've taken the crankshaft out and I've just bolted it onto the end of a flywheel so I can stand it up. So next thing I'm going to do is take the rods off. I've now got the rods off the crankshaft. So just have a, a look here. You can see the state of the, of the journals. There's no obvious scoring, marks, anything on those. They're all, all looking very good. If you look at the, the rods, you can see the bearings. There's a, a couple of minor marks on some of them, but it's obviously picked up something very slightly. But overall, yes, um, they look fine. Um, these are the bolts, 10 millimeter hex on them very tight <laughs> had to use a big breaker bar to get them off that's all done so that's the end of this video um i'm now going to check the journal diameters and um try and come up with a plan for what i'm going to do next